Hello, hello. So with Avatar Dynamics fully released, uh, people are, you know, wanting to grab ears and hair and tail and things like that, and they want animations to play. So what I want to do in this video is cover the stretch value on Fizzbones and show you guys how you can actually use that to essentially drive animations and things like that in your animator uh, to maybe like an angry face or worried face or something like that. Um, you know, when people uh, grab ears and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we'll hop into VRC really quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then we'll hop back into Unity and get started. Okay, so here we are in VRC. And what we're going to do is we're going to test our ears and our tail just to kind of show what you can do with these. So if I grab my right ear here, and we stretch it out, you can see that I do an angry face. See here, and let me toggle off my glasses here. Be a little bit easier to see. There we go. So I grab my ear and I pull it. I do an angry face. You can see I get more angry the further you pull it as well. And then we also have, where's my tail at? the tail as well that when we pull it we do an annoyed face it's a little hard to pull because it's uh got a longer stretch so it's <laughs> but you can see here as we pull on our tail we get more and more annoyed i don't like people pulling on our tail <laughs> all right so we'll hop back into unity and we will go over how to do this and you guys can have ears that uh make you angry and stuff too i'll see you guys in unity Alrighty, so we're back in unity here and what i like to do is make sure that people have a few things that they uh know before we get started so one thing that i've been asked a lot is having problems with like testing avatars in unity and so i'd like to make sure that people know that if you're not using Lumia's uh, emulator, then what you want to do is click on your avatar base, go to your animator here, and make sure that your FX layer is in your controller. This will let you test your animations and things in Unity um, whenever you want to check things out. Another thing too is that I use right defaults. Uh, let's see. I use right defaults off on my animations, uh, on my avatar, everywhere. So just know that I'm using right defaults off. I'll leave a link down below in the description to a video by Cam that explains how to toggle off right defaults and set up your expressions and such so that they work with that. Um, and then one last thing is that I'm using uh, categories to kind of uh, put my animation or my parameters under for my animations so like i have fizz here as a category for it and if you look at my parameters list i just have fizz in front of it and then a slash and then my my actual name for my parameter and so this just lets me keep things nice and organized in my list here as you can see so with those things out of the way Let's go ahead and hop into our fizz bones. So we're going to be using the left ear, right ear, and the tail. And this is going to be the same across all of them. So I'll just use one ear as an example. But this exact same thing is applicable to other ears, tails, hair, things like that. What you want to do is down here in options, or just above options, you want to make sure that your max stretch is set to some value you'll have to figure out exactly what works for you i'm using 0.5 so that it's not too much of a stretch but a little bit but you want to make sure that there's at least something here so that we can have a value to actually catch and drive our animations then with that what we we'll want to do is we're going to have our parameter here so it'll be fizz slash ear l and that's our, that's our base parameter name here, is fizz slash ear L. And so you wanna make sure that that is what this is and your, this parameter name is 
in your uh, Fizzbone script or whatever you're doing. If you're using hair or tail or something like that, you can put that in here. Um, but just make sure that it's this. And the reason we don't have the underscore stretch on this right here is that this is essentially saying, hey, look for this parameter. And then uh, it gets created in game with the underscore stretch added to it. So what you want to do is just make sure that you have this set up in your uh, your parameter here and the fizzbone script. But inside of your animator, you're going to want to add the underscore stretch to it so that we can test these things in our FX layer here. And so you can see down here, it says uh, several parameters are created using the key name provided. So this is our key name. And so it'll be fizz slash ear L. And then down, as it says down here, it'll be that parameter and then underscore stretch. And it goes from zero to one on a float, which is why we're gonna use a float over here for it. So what we'll do is we'll come over here and you'll want to make a new layer for your contacts here. Uh, I have this here already just because I have other stuff set up too. I've got a happy and a worried face. Uh, I covered this in a different video for head pats and nose poops. So if you wanna check that out, this covers how to you know trigger a happy face or a worried face using uh, senders and receivers on your head and your nose. Um, but we're gonna be looking at just angry grabbed L, R, and annoyed grab here. So using these three animations and our layer here, and then you'll wanna go to your parameters and you wanna click the plus sign here and create a new float. And when you do that, you'll just wanna name it whatever you're using in your fizz bone. Uh, but you'll also want to add the underscore stretch to it. So if you're using, say you're just using ear L, then you'd want to add the underscore stretch to it here. If you're not using the fizz for your organization and stuff like that. So you just put ear L underscore stretch, ear R underscore stretch, uh, tail underscore stretch. And you want to use these, these parameters for driving your animations here. So before we get into the logic of the animations, I'll show you how I actually have these set up uh, themselves. So if we go into our animation here, animation tab, um, we will go to our angry face and we'll preview it so you can see it here. So we have our angry face. Um, again, using right defaults off, um, our face will essentially go back to a default rest pose, which is our idle face right here. This is our idle face. And so what we do is we grab like our idle face keyframes here. So you click on this top keyframe for our idle face and control C. And we go into our angry grabbed animation. And we would just control V it in here. You just press control V and you've got your, your idle face and here's your first keyframe. Then we go to our angry face and we would grab this top keyframe to select all of our blend shapes. All these different blend shapes here and you just control C and then we go back over to our angry grabbed animation and what you want to do is you want to go to a, like I have a second you can change it a little bit but I wouldn't do just a single keyframe you don't want it to just be like these two keyframes here you want it to have a little bit of time it might maybe half a second will work but I would just stick with like a second or more and you just control V your angry face keyframes into here and this is the same thing for our annoyed face. And so what happens is we transition from our resting face to our angry face across this animation. There we go. So then we can go to our annoyed grab. And it's the same thing. We go from our resting face to our annoyed face. Resting face to annoyed face over a second. already and so now that we have our animation set up uh ideally you guys have like put these together for yourselves here um which with other, whatever faces you're wanting whether it's maybe confused or sad or something like that um you have your animation set up what we do is we just grab our animations here and we need to be back in our other layer face contacts so you just grab your two animations you drag and drop them in if you're using right defaults off just select both your animations here and toggle right defaults off. 
So now they're off on both of these. Um, I already have these in here, so I'm going to delete these two here and we'll use these here. So we have an empty clip. Um, again, Cam's video kind of explains why we have uh, why we would need an empty clip here um, since we have our reset layer above. This is constantly firing. So if we have an empty clip as our default layer when none of these are happening, then our reset layer can uh, constantly fire off. So again, explained in Cam's video, I'm not going to go over that in this one. But what we can do here is we'll be transitioning out of our empty clip into our different faces. So let's look at our transition. For our transition here, we have our fizz ear L underscore stretch is greater than and then 0.05. So it's it's a very like small value. It's almost immediately when it's starting to stretch, it will transition into this animation. And what happens is this animation or this state right here is going to be using motion time. So we put motion time on this, click that there, put motion time on this, and we want to find our animation or our uh, parameter for our animation here. And so we'll use ear L stretch for our left animation. And what this is going to do is allow us to scrub across our animations timeline uh, based on the value of our float. So as our floats value goes up, the how far we are through our animation actually changes. So when our float is at 0.5, we'll be at 0.3 seconds uh, or 0.5 seconds essentially because we're scrubbing halfway through this animation. So this is where 0.5 would end up. And then 0.75 would end up 75% through this animation. And then one would end up entirely through the animation to where we're at our fully annoyed face. And so that's what our motion time is doing here. And we'll have this on all of our animations. So you'd put, you'd select your parameter here, here you checkbox it, and then select our parameter is, and then ear R stretch. Go down here, go to motion time, and then fizz, and then tail stretch. And so that puts it on all of our animations here. And so then what we do is we use our ear L underscore stretch is less than 0.05, and it'll transition back out of this animation and into our empty clip. And so that's what we're using to drive back and forth between our animations here and our empty clip whenever people grab our ears. And so what I'll do here is grab the camera, change this here, gizmos. Let's move this closer. And then we hit the play button. And I'll just drop this down a little further. So if you look here, whenever I grab my left ear and I stretch it, this ear L stretch is going to change. So watch here. Uh, there we go. There we go. And actually what I want to do here is make this a little easier to see. So as we grab this, the value starts to go up and we go into our angry grabbed animation. And as we stretch further, we get closer and closer to our full blend shape of our angry face. And it works with both ears here. For the ear R. And then we can also grab our tail. So if we grab our tail, we'll see our tail stretch value go up. And our face gets more and more annoyed. And so that's what you can use here to drive two different, uh, different animations as well as driving the motion time for these animations to have a like clean like uh, transition into your normal idle face to an angry face or worried, sad, whatever it might be. So that is using stretch values on fizz bones to drive, uh, drive parameters. The same concept applies to the angle and the is grabbed. Um, the is grabbed is a bool, it's not a float, um, but the angle is a float. So if you understand this well enough, then you could actually, you could just apply the same logic into, you know, if someone grabs your ear, then it makes you do something. And you just use your, you know, fizz ear R here, but then in the parameters list, you'd have fizz ear R underscore is grabbed. And that would be what you use in your ana animator in your parameters list. So hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, 
If you have any questions about what I did here or if I missed something, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer y'all's questions or clarify things. And if you guys have requests for other videos and tutorials, uh, just let me know down below and I'd be more than happy to go through other things and, you know, help people learn this new system because I, I realize this can be pretty daunting to go through and learn about because there's a lot of new things with it. But it's really cool and it gives uh, people a lot more ability to do different things. So hope you guys have a great day and enjoy Avatar Dynamics.